Okay, this is um, Hosori Neridu on January 26, 2014, and we're in for an ASDF walkthrough. So how does ASDF work? It works by, you tell it, hey, I want a system, let's say Alexandria, and I type ASDF load system Alexandria, I hit enter, it says T because it did it. And how does it do it? It finds alexandria.asd in its search path, which we'll discuss later. It, uh, in its file alexandria.asd, it finds a declaration dev system that says, oh, here is a system Alexandria. It has values like uh, metadata in it. And then at some point, it has a list of components. This component is a list. It has static files, which basically are not used for much. And it has files, which are list files. And some of them depend on other files here. And uh, uh, ASDF will ensure that when you load a uh, Alexandria, it will load each of these files in order. And there is like here some um, various uh, customization. So what does it do? When you look at load system, metadata, load system here, ooh, with a great ability, we'll see what that is. It's already like plumbing. Load system, what it does, it applies the function operate to the load system operation, which will be load up, as you can see. Um, thank you, Slime, for telling me the value of load system operation. So it operates on load up, and it returns T after success. So what does operate does? Operate is the magic thing that does everything uh, in ASDF, and it's defined in ho ho. Um, so everything right now is defined in build.asdf, which has a file with everything, but that's not what we really want. What we really want is um, something described in the readme uh, here, debugging tip. To uh, load the ASDF in such a way that metadata will work inside the source code and run this. So let's run this. Add the slime REPL. So this will make the ASDF source code uh, loadable via metadata. Hopefully, it's taking more time than I thought it should. But it looks like it's working somehow. OK, so this, um, of course, I'm already finding everything in a different file. But that should make metadata work. So let's go back to um, load system, metadata, and it's defined in operate.lisp. Isn't that useful? So operate.lisp, and then if I metadata and operate, it's also defined in operate.lisp. And there, it's a generic function. And the main method, there's an around, around method that we can look at uh, later. There's a before method also. And the main method is this one, which says, uh, first, I make a plan with make plan, which is a new name of traverse, because it's not perfectly compatible with traverse. And then when I make the plan, I perform the plan. And then I return for backwards compatibility two values, the operation and the plan. Isn't it okay, fantastic? Uh, can you explain the, the difference between make plan and traverse? Yes. The thing is that traverse always returns so a the list. Purpose, just the purpose of this uh, would be to have you explain exactly the bugs in the previous Yes, I can explain those bugs. I can do everything. It will take time, though. So first, uh, I want to uh, let's in package ASDF, and what, what I want to traverse, say, load up, and I want to traverse what? I want to traverse uh, ASDF, and I want to force T. Hey. So here, what it tells me, it tells me that uh, traverse always returns a list. See, it returns this list that says, first I must prepare up for ASDF, then I must prepare up for ASDF build, then I must prepare up for <coughs> ASDF build ASDF, then I can compile up uh, ASDF build ASDF, then I can load it, then I'm done compiling uh, ASDF build, then I'm t done loading ASDF build, then I'm done compiling ASDF, and I'm done uh, loading ASDF. And if I make plan instead, it will return uh, plan object. Well, let's remove that. Uh, what the hell? Make plan maybe invalid argument. Oh, make plan, plan class. So default plan class. OK, uh, it returns me a plan object if I type make plan. 
and a plan object is useful because, for instance, with PUIU you can have, um, if I load system PUIU, it will change the default plan class from sequential uh, plan to parallel plan. And now I have a parallel plan, and parallel plan does not return a list, it's a, a graph, it's a full graph. The parallel plan returned by PUIU is a full graph of everything. And so uh, now if I go back to operate, if I go back to the normal op definition of operate, okay, def method operate, this one, see, I get the plan, then I apply the plan, and make plan allows you to return something else in a list, and if I return, if I don't return a list, I'm not backwards compatible with traverse. So, um, for a, um, yes. I noticed that the, the documentation still states we call traverse. Shall I change that to make plan? Mm, probably, yes. And diff uh, def method traverse. Here's a def method for traverse, and it's a, it's in file backward interface because it's not used internally anymore by by um, by ASDF. And what it does, it it, it calls make plan and it extracts a list of the plan actions. So traverse just is just now a thin wrapper around make plan, and um, yes. Okay, I'll make I'll make a change. Yes, and uh, Traverse al always returns a, a list for backwards compatibility, and that's uh, and that's good. Okay, so the, I the reason the reason why you kept Traverse is because uh, there were people specializing on it. Yes, there were some people using Traverse or specializing on it or doing things with Traverse, and uh, okay. and so for back. Yes, it, it's also useful the if you are debugging, the, the traverse output is uh, more readable. Yes, traverse is useful for, for debugging. It tells you what, 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 for instance, when you're debugging, why the hell isn't ASDF doing this or that? You, you look at traverse and it has a list. Oh yes, it's, it, it, it is doing this, or no, it's not doing this. And if it is doing this, then you debug and perform. Okay, it, it is doing this, so why is it perform doing what I want? And if it's not doing it, oh, why are the dependencies missing? Or in my case, it was often why did I break the algorithm and whatever. So traverse is useful to to uh, to figure out what you broke or didn't break. Uh, okay, so the call graph is you load system, which calls operate, which calls make plan, and then make plan hell hell starts make plan. Where is make plan? Uh, okay, make plan. Okay, make plan. So make plan takes a plan class. So this is uh, some kind of um, interface passing style, I suppose, which uh, I stole from XCVB, which uh, inspired also uh, the famous uh, interface passing style thing. So now make plan is specialized by a plan class, which allows to have a difference between um, between what you call it, uh, serial and parallel plans, and all kinds of plans you want to have. And then you can perform a plan. And here's the main method of make plan. So make plan, you create a plan of the default class, and then you traverse the action you want with traverse action, and you return the plan. So now the, all the all the the meat is in traverse action. Where is traverse action? So traverse action is uh, here. Traverse action is this thing. And before we go further, so oh, this is ugly. And then before the end, hopefully we'll understand that. But that's where I have to stop and say, OK, before we go further, we have to understand the data model of ASDF and everything else. So let's go back to ASDF.ASD here. So ASDF is divided now in two parts, the driver that has been renamed to UIOP and the dev system part. So driver defines all the portability layer. I hopefully won't go over it too much, but here is UIP.ASD. Um, UIP.ASD has uh, all these files, package, common list, utility, OS, pass name, file system, stream, 
image, run program, list build, configuration, backward driver, and driver. And all these are basically a portability layer that the kernel of which was already present in ASDF2, like uh, maybe a good chunk of this function were already in ASDF2, and a good chunk of this function were in XCVB driver. And basically, when I started cleaning up things for ASDF3, I found that I really want this separated in separate files, and I started these things, and it got a bit out of hand. Now it's as big, uh, ASDF driver UIOP is as big as ASDF dev system, so it's big, but uh, it does everything I was really missing, and uh, uh, it makes ASDF really portable the way even ASDF2 wasn't. So the only thing, the only thing that really matters from here is package, I suppose. And package is has this thing called a define package. Uh, define package. And define package is um, a clever replacement of dev package that uh, that allows you here's a utility. So define package is a bit like dev package, except it allows you to recycle symbols, which is important because I split the ASDF package in plenty of sub packages. So this allows to recycle a symbol from ASDF into UIUP uh, utility. So if these packages exist, I'm going to recycle the symbols from there. And it has also other capabilities such as mixing things. And dev package, unlike define package, works well with hot upgradability. So it's basically a version of dev package that works well with um, uh, with hot upgradability. And you see that every file now starts with, let's say, um, uh, operate. Let's go back to operate. Every file starts with this ASDF package, define package. And it should probably be UIUP package here instead. Um, that's a new canonical name. So, um, a define package and it will do the right thing, and this this new style of uh, having every file with its own package is called package system. It's uh, inspired by Quick Build, which itself is very similar to Fastall Pass, and it allows you to have actually all the dependencies uh, implicit in your use statement. So this file depends on UIOP common list, UIOP, uh, uh, ASDF upgrade, etc., etc. So this file depends on all these things and. From the packages that you depend on, you can define, you can find which file you depend on or which system you depend on, and that's a nice new style of programming that was suggested to me by the Quick Build guys. Just to, just out of curiosity, does yes. that does that also look at things like uh, import from and shadowing import yes. from? Yes, yes, it definitely does. From a look from import from and shadowing import from. So I don't think I'm using either import from or shadowing import from inside. Uh, ASDF itself, but if you have that, it, it will look at them. So um, I don't know which package uh, has that, but yes, it does. Yes, and if and you can define um, if I look at package system, you can define a mapping or reserve. If I look at Lisp uh, interface library slash lil dot ASD, you can register things such as here. I can register that. All these packages come from closure mop, the, and therefore, if I use one of these packages, I know that they come actually from the closure mop system. So I can. There is a bridge between packages and systems. You can define this package depend from this system, and everything will work. So let's go back to um, what was I looking uh, at at asdf.asd. Okay, so here is the ASDF uh, system itself. Uh, it's very ugly, but what it really does is I have one file ASDF that is in uh, the subdirectory build, and this file is a, is a result from this monolithic concatenate op of ASDF death system here. So this file, it comes pre-built in a tarball when you get ASDF from a tarball. Or you have to type make when you get ASDF from uh, from um, from uh, git. You type make and it creates that file, and uh, it it 
ASDF knows that dependency-wise, it comes from the concatenating all these source files with uh, something called monolithic concatenate source up, which also recurses in your system dependencies. So since it depends on ASDF prelude and ASDF driver, it will first concatenate contents of ASDF prelude and then ASDF driver, and then all these things. And ASDF prelude, since we are there, it's just one file header. Let's look at header.lisp. Apart from uh, the license, what it does, it does an ugly thing to punt and an upgrade and basically destroys the ASDF package and wholesale destroys the ASDF package if you are upgrading from an old, AS old enough to old an ASDF. Farai, quick, uh, quick yes. question. One thing I wasn't sure of was, what is the distinction between the monolithic concatenate operations and the other concatenate okay. operations? <coughs> Basically, monolithic is a prefix invented by the inventors of ASDF bundle, uh, which is uh, some ECL hackers. And monolithic means recurse in the system dependencies, where when it's not monolithic, it means just do it for the current system. And the, oh, okay. and the idea was that if you want to uh, have a dot, uh, a, a facile for the system and all its dependencies, you, you, you use the monolithic and then your entire application is in one facile. Whereas if you want uh, just the current system to be uh, uh, in a facile, you use the facile up, which will put your system in a facile, but each of its dependencies have also to be loaded as their own facile. Thank you. So yes. Yeah, also, and also, uh, um, I also have a question. Uh, will you be going into this upgrading stuff later? Because I mean, it's obviously coming up all the time. Yes. <laughs> While you're browsing through the code, but like, can you reserve some time for that? Because that would be interesting. Yes. So uh, let's go <coughs> very quickly. Uh, uh, Let's, without going to the details, we see that there are two, two major components for the, uh, uh, three major components for the upgrade. The first was this uh, defined package, which is a dev package that does work with upgrade. And, and like the normal dev package, with, is there any like symbol discrepancy in the normal dev package, uh, SBCL and other oper uh, systems will complain uh, and or error out or something. With defined package, it doesn't. And defined package also does uh, the the recycling of symbols so that you can upgrade from an old version of ASDF. Then the other thing is with upgradeability. With upgradeability is basically an eval compile top level load top level execute that also allows you to have defn store instead of defn and dev generic store instead of dev generic. And what dev generic store and defn store do is declare the function as as uh, not in line, where is it not in line? I don't remember, not in line here. The function is declared as not in line. And also in some cases you have to undefine the function because it has an uh, incompatible um, signature. So you must undefine the generic function if you are going to redefine it with a new signature. So any function that has changed signature in the past has to be undefined first. and. Uh, Different store and the generic store does that for you. So that's uh, two okay. things. And the last part is the first part that's loaded as part of ASDF proper is called upgrade. And this file has uh, this file has crap such as um, the ASDF version. It has a function to, cal to compute the version of ASDF. It has also a list of previously loaded ASDF versions. It has a current ASDF version. It has the oldest forward compatible ASDF version. So anything older than 233 is uh, incompatible enough that you must basically drop the data. Whereas if it's 2.33 or later, uh, we, are, we can preserve the data when, when we upgrade ASDF and the data being previously loaded ASDF systems. So if I'm <coughs> if I'm upgrading from something older than 2.33, I will drop any any data about currently loaded systems because it will be incompatible. 
And then... Yeah. Yes? Ah, okay. Yeah, thanks. So... Okay, and I then there is a... There is a magic macro when upgrading, which uh, ensures that um, uh, some some forms or redefinitions are only defined when upgrading. And this is useful, for instance, for uh, methods on methods on what methods on update object on update instance on redefined class and things like that. So you only need to define your update instance on redef on redefined class uh, methods if you are upgrading. And then, so and then some functions we have to uh, uh, eagerly redefine here because on so some implementations really like that. So these are the things that we really need to uh, an intern or redefine or some things here. These must be redefined and this must be an intern. And once again, a lot of the plumbing is necessary because. On some Im implementation, this kind of redefining works, but on these implementation, it doesn't work. And you need to do like special things on CLS, special things on ECL, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes you find that a, a, a new way to redefine things that works on more implementations, and then you adopt that. But uh, so it, it, it's really a lot. There, there was a lot of hit and miss in making the upgrade work, but now the upgrades are tested. If I meet a X shell, and I make test or something, uh, I can make test and it will test my current uh, uh, with CCL, let's say. It will test all these things with CCL and there is an upgrade test that will also test the upgrade. So we can test yeah. CCL. Yes, sorry. And yeah, uh, okay. So, so uh, be because I, what... I what yeah, sorry. I believe you also wanted to go into the data model, but I think we lost that thread already. Never mind. <laughs> okay, th thank you for that info about the upgrade. Yes, okay, let's let's go back to the data model because that's an important thing. So let's go back to asdf.asd and there, upgrade. Okay, so the data model is defined here in, in all these files. So the first file defines the data model. There is component, system, cache, find system, find component, operation, action, list action. All this defines the data model. So uh, let's go. Uh, let's go over in component. Component dot list. Yes. I, I I think you could probably do the the data model for the the systems themselves first, and then maybe in a later pass you could do the cache and how fine yes. system works. Yes. 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 Um, for the, the system itself, the, the, the base class is called component, and a system is a component. So a component has all these things that are associated with it, a name, uh, version, description, long description, sideways dependencies. I wanted to put sideways dependencies in the subclass of component, but that's not, compati that's not backward compatible. It has this if feature thing which allows you which I don't think anyone is really using except me right now because it's only an ASDF3 thing. Um, it, it allows you to have a file defined only uh, if the feature is uh, expression is true. And what is this? In order to, in order to, there used to be in order to versus uh, versus what uh, do first, and now there's only in order to that the normal uh, uh, dependencies. Inline methods, what's that? Oh, yes, that's um, actually it's not obsolete so anymore. Yes, and okay. sorry, your, your, your prepare up means that do first is unnecessary now, is that right? Yes, do first is unnecessary now, and it's not just due to prepare off, but we, we'll, we'll see that later. It's due to the fact that uh, the traversal uh, understand now two kinds of. Um, of dependencies, those that are in the current image and those that are not in the current image. So anyway, this is uh, the dev class uh, of component who have plenty of things. A component has a find pass, which is like go up the parent uh, until uh, you find the name of the component. So, um, okay, so and there are plenty of components that don't matter. Uh, system, after a component, there's system. And a system is not just any component. So there's a thing called proto system that allows you to keep the, the to preserve the identity of a system when you redefine it. 
when you redefine it, it can be defined from a different class. And so first I drop all the slots, and I drop the slots by basically doing a change class back to proto system, and that drops every slot except the slots I really care about. And then I do uh, a, a change class again to the new class of the system. So a system is just a module that is also a proto system and that has these additional slots. And where was module defined? I suppose module was also defined in, uh, in component. A module is a child component that is also a parent component. And uh, I had to keep it a parent component for... No, it's a component, and yes. Child component and parent component. Yes, uh, so a, a child component is a component that's a child of something else, or that may be the child of something else. And a parent component is, um, is a, a component that has some children that are named. So the model, the data model is that if you look at, uh, again, let's look at another system. What's a nice system that has children? Um, does anyone remember a system that has children? Okay, it has modules. It has modules. Furry Utils has things sing like that. Or doesn't it? Yes, here it has a module called base that has uh, sub components and it had another module called file system that has some components, etc. So that, that defined a hierarchy and um, and so if I look at and my red ball and I what can I do? I can uh, load system fire utils and I can ooh, it's loading it with PYU. So it's really running your build serially. And it's taking a lot of time, I don't know why, but that's okay, I suppose. And uh, while it's doing that, let's uh, look at the uh, component again. So there are what are other dev class? There is parent component. Then fire stateful does not designate any package. Um, fire utils looks like it's uh, bogus these days. Um, so I need to fix it. Yes. So I, sh I should point out for those who are familiar with the old, older versions of ASDF that parent component is something that uh, used to, used to be module. Or, I mean, we still have module, but that was that used to be the dis distinctive thing about a module is that it could have children. <coughs> yes, and, and so systems were modules. I, I think they still are. They yes, right? the systems are still module for backward compatibility, and I needed that backward compatibility because the old ASDF one manual advertised defining uh, methods and modules just for the sake of defining them on on system. And this pattern was used all over the place, and unhappily that uh, I couldn't remove that. Maybe, maybe in a year or two you can remove. Uh, uh, you can remove. Um, maybe in a few years you can have system be a parent uh, component without it being a module. After you have fixed all the clients to not do that stupid thing that was advertised in ASDF one's manual. <coughs> and. Uh, the thing that was advertised was for changing the source file type, and now changing the source file type is done. Uh, uh, type. Oops. If I look for type, yes. Now the way to change the source file type of a, of a component is by having this type uh, slot, and before it was done by having uh, defining a method on source file type. What is source file type? Oops. Yes, source file type is here. Before there was this horrible source file type thing, and for backward compatibility, we're still using source file type. But hopefully, um, after everyone has moved to ASDF three, we can delete source file type. It's just a um, horror. So, so there. That's uh, that's something for you to do, uh, uh, Robert. At some point, get rid of source file type. Right. I'm I'm just writing myself a note in my ASDF <coughs> notes that we should 
at some we should deprecate source file and I better check and make sure it's out of the manual. Yes. And uh well wow, I'm speaking too much with uh, not enough alcohol. <coughs> Apparently, I have sake. So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I'm speaking too much and ooh, better. So, source file type is uh, is to go. So then there's system, and so a system is uh, has these things, and um, and then after we define the system and all the and all the things that are related after a system well the cache is just a gener general cache for the results of methods because uh, many methods are expensive to compute such as output files and input files and need to be cached so whoops so if I look at the cache it's trivial it's a very trivial cache with an EQ UAL hash table and uh, it has a special thing for file stamps and it's used by, I think the next thing is operation, maybe? Operation. So, okay, what is the thing with operation and component? The thing is that the nodes of your graph are a pair of an operation and a component. Your graph is not a graph of components. Your graph is not a graph of, of operations. Your graph is a graph of action. And an action, a def type, an action is const operation component. That's how we represent an action inside. And all my methods are methods of two things for double dispatch or dispatch on operation and component. Because class does not allow a dispatch on a pair like, like that, but it allows a dispatch on two objects. And this dispatch on two objects is the, the genius finding of Dan Barlow. If you have to credit Dan Barlow for one thing about ASDF, it's this thing that you must dispatch on both operation and component. That's a genius stroke of, of Dan. And we must really um, think him that, that the thing that makes ASDF extensible and that the thing that, uh, that just works, like magic finding. And uh, he failed to name the things actions, actions the name that I resurrected from a previous uh, list build system called build. But uh, I needed a name for this pair of no, operation and component that's an essential concept in, uh, in, uh, in ASDF. And it's called an action and counts of operation and component. And that's the nodes of your dependency graph. Uh, an action depends on other actions, and you must do that action before that action, etc. Et et so where is operation defined? Operation is defined here. Uh, in operation.lisp and def class operation it has original unit target. Original unit target is, is a horror and I don't know. That's a horror I pass on to you, Robert. Um, for backward compatible Lilty, we need to remember them and it's still used by GBB Open and Swank. Uh, hopefully, we can get uh, Swank rid of it and GBB Open too. And wait, wait, I'm sorry, which, which is the problem? So, okay, the problem is that... Uh, uh, originally, it works. Uh, okay. I, I've read the GBB open yes. ASDF system definition, and it, it, it's, it's a complete horror anyway. Yes, it, he, he tried, basically, he used to have his own module system, and he tried to map it to ASDF, and I suppose the solution is uh, at some point to adopt one or the other, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean... Okay, it, it can, GBB open can also be evolved. Um, the thing is that uh, operation, originally towards, uh, the way the way Dan Barlow used to uh, do forcing of uh, a traversal was to put a forced argument in the operation itself. And now with ASDF3, we, I have a separate object called the plan, and the plan handles being forced or not. Uh, and so it doesn't make sense to have forced an operation, but uh, Dan Barlow kept the things in the operation originally talk so he could pass along the forced flag to other operations and this didn't 
work so well. And there are, there's a big problem uh, regarding the operation that in theory you can have many operations of the same class and that all that have different flags or whatever and that can do slightly different things. That's the theory. In practice, it that doesn't work because the table that remembers if an oper if an action has already been done is indexed by uh, operation name or operation class name, yes, or operation class. I don't remember. Well, I think the class name, yes. So the symbol of the operation class name, and this is done because. Uh, hashing on an object doesn't work, or on a pair of objects doesn't work, so uh, the way it remembers that the thing has been done is by the, the name of the class, and so in this hash table all instances of the same class are conflated into the same thing. And so if you really had op different operations of the same class meaning different thing, it would not work in the current ASDF. So uh, in practice, you have only one usable object of, of a given, given operation class, and if you have more, things will not work well, and any extensions that depend on that is bound to fail horribly. So, and this is because, yes, uh, operations are cached in a special way by class name. Can I, can I, can I ask you a question? Why, why do they have to be objects at all? Operations? Uh, yeah. First, because we all we, we all, all the stuff. time we're all the time using having these methods that specialize on operation and component. So multi thanks to multiple okay, dispatch, yeah, okay, yeah, it, it, it makes multiple. Work, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, but that, that's a good question. That's a good question. It means that and the, uh, and let's look at uh, action. So operations can so all this this make operation find operation thing is just to ensure that, that there is only one unique operation of a of a given class or or make it easier yeah I exactly yes okay um, yeah but uh, i mean uh, otherwise this <coughs> would work so that yes I mean, it's it's fine it's just that like it's it's a lot of stuff just to make this patch work yes <laughs> so uh, e everything is all about uh, having w one operation per like the, the operations parameter is like a, uh uh, reco re remembering the, the operation of each class, and I suppose you could uh, make things unique. At a one way you could make things unique uh, is by having an additional slot in operation, which is which is the canonical version of this operation, and you would always inter indirect through that. And if it's not filled, then you go uh, through the uni unication. I mean, there are ways you could make things work with multiple instances of the same operation, but it, it would be expensive and I haven't done it. I tried to invent for ASDF3 a new operation called build up, which would do the correct thing for the system, which may or may not be a load up, but this never took on. So where it becomes interesting is in action. Action is the heart of the ASDF thing. So I define this. So, the so just, um, so are, are you actually, Using build up at all, or I, I noticed it's 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 in an odd position relative to all the other operations. Yes, build up was supposed to be the master operation, so that you, you have one default operation to do on the system, which would have been to build it. Um, right now, I suppose load up kind of fills this this uh, this thing, but there are some systems for for which uh, what you really want to do is, for instance, build an executable. And then your build up would have been, well, uh, uh, what's the name of it? Executable up or binary up or whatever the name of the thing is. And, and so you would come with, you would deliver a, a, a system and it would, it would have a build up and uh, that would tell you what to do with it. Uh, nobody uses it. And it, since this is not backward compatible with ESDF2, and er everyone right today wants to be backward compatible with ESDF2. Nobody is using it. And the other thing, I wanted while writing ASDF3 both to be compatible with ASDF2 and also to open a path forward so that when ASDF2 is uh, dead and forgotten, uh, there are all these new capabilities that become universally available, but uh, that right now nobody uses. Just wanted to point out that that's not true. I'm using every ASDF2. 
Yeah. Sorry, what are you using? I actively go through the manual and try to use every possible ASDF feature. <laughs> that, made my life, that made my life very easy. Just I removed hacks over hacks. Okay. My ASDF files, especially in now, you know, are very cute. Yes. Almost declarative. The almost no death method. Yes. Yes, the ASDF3 makes a lot of things easy that uh, uh, were horrible in ASDF2 and the horror in ASDF1. I remember uh, editing the Klim ASD and the Klim ASD was so full of hacks, <laughs> horrors that were present because ASDF1 was so buggy. And even with all these horrors, it was not portable because ASDF1 was so buggy. And all these things, like half of them were eliminated by moving to ASDF2 and a uh, few more of the remaining hacks could be eliminated by assuming ASDF3. So uh, when I edited the maclim.asd, you can look at the diff of the latest change to maclim.asd, you can see the, the all the... I, I was remembered why I started hacking on ASDF and the horror that, that was before and why it's so much better now. So look at maclim.asd someday. someday. It's, it's, uh, so define convenience action method. I, I found that I was constantly typing while debugging components. This depends on of uh, of um, thing like that. Component depends on of make instance load up uh, and find component uh, say uh, asdf dev system uh, action and what is this component depends on of course invalid uh, what that uh, oh fi find component has a uh, two arguments okay so here are the dependencies on load up and I found that I, I hated typing all these make instance and find component so now instead I can just type this and it will do the same. So this is a convenience uh, method and now all my methods are uh, all my methods are have uh, convenience action methods and this is the magic that does it. And so okay so Action description tells you what the action description for the action. It used to be called component description, but since no one was ever defining method on component description except um, except people at work, I decided to. I think it was it may or may not have been invented at work. I don't remember. But uh, anyway, uh, I uh, I renamed it from component description to action description because no one was using the old method. Uh, explain tries to explain. Uh, don't remember what explain does. It it, it issues a oh explain displays a message that uses action description. Okay, uh, dependencies. Okay, here is where the, the meat of the, the thing. This component depends on. So component depends on is now the way that the one and only way that uh, your dependency graph declares its dependencies. It used to be that there were dependencies implicit in Traverse, and that was a big bug in ASDF 1 and 2. And now all the dependencies are defined in component depends on. And it returns the dependencies in a weird format, which is once again backward compatible, uh, but that kind of works. So um, uh, mainly it returns something, uh, a list of an operation and a list of components or now it can be a, a, an operation designator and a, a list of component designators where designator uh, is defined uh, as below. So, uh, just, uh, as yes. a, just as a nit, that's, isn't that component plus, not star? Can you ever have a naked operation? Yes, and then it, it's nothing. And it's necessary for, once again, sometimes as a, uh, I depend on load up of an empty let, then uh, that's an empty list. Like when uh, uh, it, it's actually used, uh, it means that uh, 
uh, for prepare op uh, depends the load up of the sideway dependencies and if the list of sideway dependencies is empty well I'll get a uh, naked load I depend on load up of nothing and that's that's valid that means that and that's the same as an op I mean that's the same as nothing right it's the same as nothing as opposed to say applying it to yourself or something like that okay l l l l let's look let's look at actually at that uh, the prepare up of uh, action is that okay but what about the prepare up of uh, the first one is upgrade I think yeah it it has a lo an empty load up here because there, there are no sideway dependencies to upgrade upgrade the first file in the, in the system so it returns you a load up and see here load up it returns load up as a symbol and here it returns a prepare up as an object and both are, 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 are accepted and uh, and an, on the object, and now it, it returns also a prepare the object prepare up on the object ASDF dev system uh, being the system. So um, the old component depends on only accepted symbols and then names, where names were relative to the parent of the current component, and the current uh, the current thing instead accepts. Uh, operation designators, which can be a name or an actual operation, and uh, component designators, which can be a name related to the parent of the current component or a component object. And if it's a component object, well, um, that works. So where were we in action.lisp? Action.lisp, so component depends on is the thing. And uh, you can conceive of component depends on as being a, an append com method combination uh, inside, but unhappily, uh, it was for backwards compatibility. It's not uh, an append. Uh, it doesn't have an append. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, method combination. So you have to manually uh, do things. And you see here, there's an around method that calls a cache because. The list of components uh, is also uh, something that's ex that can be expensive to uh, to compute, especially for bundle uh, methods, uh, for bundle operations. So we cache the component depends on, and this uh, so we only have to compute it once. So uh, there are plenty of methods that are uh, expensive to compute, and the cache like massively speeds up uh, ASDF as compared to having no cache. Uh, um, in these cases, and these cases being all the bundle operations. Uh, component. How, how 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 difficult is it to to maintain that cache? I mean, to detect when it's dirty. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure what you mean by dirty, but uh, um, the is it, you clear it for components that it when. Oh, oh, when a system is redefined, you clear the cache? I think I, I, the, the cache is uh, uh, empty uh, in uh, operate. So if I look at operate uh, with ASDF cache or something, uh, what what's the name of the cache? Uh, with, with, it's called, called, yes, with ASDF cache. So there must be a, uh, a with ASDF cache somewhere if it's not in operate. Ah, here. Uh, if it's not in operate, I don't remember where it is. Maybe in well, I don't remember where. Let's grab for it. A shell. Uh, grab with ASDF cache store p. Okay, there it's in fine system. Huh. Interesting. I thought there would be a, a with ASDF cache. In um, in uh, in operate, that's weird. Oh, maybe because it uh, it has got more than with the SDF cache. Let's uh, open find system. So find system is something we need to look at some point. But with the SDF cache. Oh yes, because it's wrapped in something called with system definitions. Yeah. So. Uh, with the cache is just one of the two things uh, of the many things you find in with system definitions and operate will have a with system definitions um, with system ah, okay okay and okay and with system definitions basically does plenty of bindings to make sure that 
I can do things properly and uh, one of these one of the things it does is the cache. Another thing it does is remembering which systems are being defined so that there is no like infinite loop in uh, defining a system that depends on another system that depends on etc. If there's a circularity in your uh, file in your system dependency or in the file in the file dependencies between your system, uh, there will be um, there will be an infinite loop. So uh, let's look at which system definition. So yes, it's a, there's a list of systems being defined and and other things like that. So uh, yes. Uh, where were we? We were inside cache, action maybe? Okay, we're inside action, yes. So uh, in order to will be the, the in order to uh, dependency that you specify as part of your dev system form. So you can, you can say, hey, uh, there are dependencies to this, additional dependencies, magic dependencies to this particular file. And I use it in asdf.asd here. Uh, if you remember here, in order to in order to uh, build ASDF, I have to first make sure I have a concatenated ASDF dev system. I must make sure that I have this ASDF build uh, build ASDF dot list before I load it. There's yeah, so so there. And uh, so so this is a good example of the monolithic operations because that's it's because it's a monolithic operation that we get UEOP as well as yeah. ASDF. Yes, and we get also the header right. and UIOP, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, this in order to here says, uh, yes, it adds a, a magic dependency to, um, to ESDF without having to define an external method, and that's, that's just great. And so, there uh, is a famous downward and upward and whatever operations. So it used to be that downward and sideway were implied by the traverse algorithm, but never uh, explicit. And when I fixed ASDF uh, two and one and two and made ASDF three, I had to um, to separate downward operation and sideway uh, operation into their own uh, uh, classes, and it simplified a lot of things. So a downward operation uh, has an operation that needs to be propagated, and if it's nil, it means itself, which is a default. So by default, uh, when you run uh, to load up, uh, propagates a load up downwards, and compile up will compi uh, propagate a compile up downwards. But uh, your monolithic whatever will not propagate itself downwards. It doesn't make sense for monolithic uh, uh, concatenate up to when they when I when I concatenate all the dependencies of the current system in in one file, I don't need to to do the same quadratically for each and every file inside inside me and have a monolithic version of upgrade.lisp and a monolithic version of uh, of uh, action.lisp, etc. All I want is a monolithic version of the current uh, the current system. So downward makes a lot of sense for load up and compile up and makes no sense at all for a bundle operations, for instance. Okay, so uh, downward, downward means the, the usual uh, use case is to define a macro and... The, the, uh, use, the, usual load, load, uh, the, the case for downward is load up and compile up. When I compile a system, I want to compile each and every file in the system and if... It, each and every file in the module and etc etc. I must I want to recurse uh, uh, downward okay. in, in the component graph. So you have you have you have a component tree actually, it's not just a graph, it's a well it's a tree annotated with dependencies which make it make it a DAG. Okay, so you, it's still it's still a, it's still a DAG, but it's mainly a, a tree. It it, it it has a it has a structure as a tree and additional structure that make make it a DAG. That's your component graph. Uh, and a downward operation is an operation such that the, the, the dependency graph or the actions that to this operation uh, walk down, walk down the, the component tree. So if I load the system, I must load each and every file in the system. That's downward operation, that's what it does. 
upward operation goes the other way around. An upward operation is uh, before I I do this thing, I must have done it on my parent and its parent, its parent, etc. on its system, and that's uh, that's the missing operation prepare up that was missing in uh, ESDF one and two and that needed to go upward. So if you, we want to remember the bug in ASDF 1 and 2, the bug was that uh, there was no timestamp propagation in ASDF. Uh, so that was, very, uh, that was very bad, which didn't matter when you build from scratch, but which made it totally buggy when you, build, when you have an incremental build. And then when I added the timestamp propagation, I found that, ooh, a big chunk uh, of the dependencies is are missing. It's a dependency on, on everything that comes before you. Uh, when before I can uh, look at the time terms of upgrade, I must have look at the time terms of UIOP and uh, etc. So if upgrade is uh, older, no, uh, yes, if my upgrade at Fastall is older than my UIP dependencies, then I need to recompile upgrade. And so I have to have something that tells me in my dependency graph that I depend on UIOP. And the thing that, that does is a, this prepare op, this new prepare op class, and it propagates upward. So before I compare, before I, I'm prepared for loading or compiling upgrade, I must be prepared for loading or compiling um, uh, the parent, which is ASDF dev system. And before that, I must have loaded all the dependencies on dev system, uh, of this dev system, so I must have loaded UIOP. So th this is a, 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 a class of an operation that propagates upward, and so downward and upward. And same thing, uh, by default, you propagate yourself upward. And, and so the, the component dev method component depend on, it, it does that. And then there is a sideways operation where I depend on, uh, before I, I do a load up, I want uh, to have a, a load up on each and every uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the things here. And uh, of, on my declared dependencies, or that was how it was done. So now it's, I before I want to prepare up, I want to do a load up on each of my uh, dependencies. And we'll see that later. And the component depends on is also trivial. So uh, let's look at the component depends on for a sideway operation. So if I have a sideway operation and a component, then I extract the sideway operation. Or if there's no sideway operation, if it's nil, then I, I take the operation itself here. So this, this form takes uh, the operation that we're going to propagate. And then uh, for each of the declared sideway dependencies, I resolve it and I add that to my depends on. Then I call next method. And the add call, call next method is because once again, either we fail, uh, Dan Barlow failed to make it an append uh, component uh, method combination. Uh, and maybe he, he did right to not make it an append uh, method combination because I'm not sure that all the supported uh, implementations at the time supported append method combinations. I, I think there were definitely some some implementations that didn't have class fully working. Mm. So if you um, ever implement an ASDF four and or can somehow afford a backwards incompatibility, I recommend that you rename it to action depends on because it's not a component that depends on it's an action it's a datum of an operation and a component so you should rename it to action depends on and and clean up some of the mess but uh, I don't think you can afford backwards incompatibility at this time so but it, it would be nice to rename it to action depends on a uh, self word operation is when an operation and a, and a component depend on another operation and a component and the typical example is load up. Before I load up a uh, given component, I must have compiled up it. So load up is the operation that says load the file for this component, and compile up is the action that says hey, compile the list file into a file. So before you load the file, you must have compiled the file. And the method is also trivial. It's uh, it's um, 
just... I, w I wonder if also that it, it may be... Yes? You know, we, I don't think we... I don't think we have, you know, um, set union uh, method combination, and that's really what's wanted here. Yes, it's set union, but uh, yes, but we don't have that. Yeah, so maybe that's also one the, of the reasons why. Uh, append. I guess you could do an append and then filter, but yes. that's what we're doing here is... The filter is done anyway by the traverse. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. The, the filtering is done anyway by the traverse algorithm later. So it, it's, uh, duplicates are not a big deal, you know? It's, uh, it's going to be filtered anyway. I'm, I'm trying to depend, remember, is component depends on, though, is not something that... I mean, if... if 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 class worked everywhere, yes, I don't believe component depends on is something that people should be writing methods for directly. Unhappily, some people use it. I don't remember who or where, but it's it's uh, there are some methods declared on component depends on. That said, if if, if you look at Kutlisp and everything, and you find that oh hey, no one de uh, defines method on component depends on, then it's the perfect time to uh, rename it to action depends on, clean up some of the mess, and uh, say hey, we declared declare Victor here. And I suppose that now that uh, 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 in order to do the right thing and I mean now that you should not need to, to define method and component depends on anymore. Ah, uh, 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 right, right. But, 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 but if, if you define a new you operation you to use in order to yes. but if you had a different scheme that wasn't downwards and sideways yes. then you would do component depends on. That's why mm, there are methods for component depends on. No, y yes and no, yes. Uh, uh, yes, you can define because, y well, the, the time you define method and component depends on uh, should be uh, either when you have a magic component or a magic operation. Or magic component now it's done with uh, in order to. And magic operation, well, when you define a new operation, you may or may not need a component depends on. And I don't know how they did thing before. Uh, yeah, when you define a new co a new operation, you you, you needed to define a component depends on, um, and you'll see that people who have defined new operations define method and component depends on. So you can't you can't you can't change That's that. That's right. Yeah. So it, it should be only used. It should only be used by people who define new operations. And unhappily, it is used by people who define new operations. So unless you have them defined. Uh, systematically de method on both component depends on for backward compatibility and action depends on for future or going forward um, you can't rename so if you want to rename oh. it to action depends on you have to fix everyone to define both and then uh, wait for everyone to have upgraded AS, uh, DF and then remove the old one yeah I think this is part of why it used to be it, it, it's so confusing to define these new classes is there's there's um, component depends on, there is in order to, and then there are input files and output files, and there's, it, yes, it was sort of did, if people would do, it would, would just, having done this, I can say you just sort of randomly define methods on all of these until something worked. Yes. So uh, the thing is that what you really need when you define a new operation, you need your component depends on because someone has to depend on the operation and your and or your operation has to depend on something or, or else it will never be used. So somehow you need a you probably need a component depends on, and then you need the output uh, files and input files. An operation done you don't need anymore. It's it's done magically unless. Uh, Unless you yes for right now it's used, the only place it's really used is for test up because test up is a is a bastard backward compatible thing, but um, th the way it's really done is you define a, a method and component depends on a method on output files a method on input files and a method on perform and that's all and that, that's okay it. so so why why is it if you have if you have uh, the ability to add sideways dependencies, mm -hmm. for example, yes, um, or selfward dependencies. Then, in theory, it l in in many cases, you wouldn't need component depends on. I believe. 
Yeah, well, I think you have pretty much every use case covered with those with those super classes. Yes, probably. I, mean, I, I can't really imagine what, what who would want to define component depends on. Yeah. Uh, mm, yes, it's most classes. I mean, uh, you never know what kind of uh, crazy things people will invent. Uh, actually, I think there is a. Uh, CFF right globular. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure you can like for the protobuf because protobuf have have like recursive dependencies on other protobufs. Uh, there may be something done magically with component depends on for protobufs. I don't remember, but um, uh, yes. Uh, uh, I, I, so so that usually yeah. in the normal in the normal cases uh, downward, upward, and sideways should cover all your all your needs. But but you can only define one downward, sideways, or uh, currently yes, Operation. you could uh, self-word. You can define a list and okay. your list here. Self-word ha can have a list, but the downward and upward. I so far I've made it only one. Um, if there's ever a use case, you could use the same um, in your list thing. I'm not sure there's a use case, but I mean. No, I'm not. I'm it, not it, either. I'm just trying to think. The um, I mean, the, yeah, the protobuf I think is you can do as a with a self word one because I think the protobuf rewrites into it and produces a, a common list source file. Yes, but it uh, the protobuf things uh, transitively depends on lots of crazy dependencies for your. Uh, other protobuf things, so uh, l let's put a, yeah. let's put aside the protobuf things. Um, uh, for upward and downward, in the worst case scenario, in the current system, you can define an intermediate operation that is a self-word yeah. operation that that depends on, on on the multiple things you need. But this, for the self-word, uh, you really need a list here, because for the self-word, uh, there are existing cases even in our current. Uh, code base that, that use it. So um, you need a, a list for self-word. And it, it should enter list so that if you specify only one operation, it transforms that into a list of uh, a singleton list. And uh, if, you, if you insert a list, it, it, it uses multiple. So how is yeah, it? So it maybe another question. So I mean, I, I think so. I, I'm not convinced that the component depends on is actually needed and then there's, and that those super classes do not cover all the cases. But I think, uh, on the other hand, what was the motivation for introducing those classes if, uh, basically, I think the actual implementation of the com component depends on uh, would be pretty straightforward for each operation. I mean, basically, w w what you're doing there with those superclasses is you're abstracting. Yes, I have mix-ins. There are mix-ins. Behavior, but it's but I mean, it would be pretty straightforward to 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 just write down what exactly the dependencies are in the component depends of on course. the definition. Of course, it's a mixing. It, it, it just abstracts away a common pattern because the pattern happens all the time and it makes it easier to get right and for other people to understand what's going on than to decrypt each and every uh, of your... Yeah, but I think right now it's, it's a bit... I mean, you, you have this... Uh, I don't know if it's related, but I think it's kind of related. You have this, this interesting problem that has been going around the mailing list for the last few days where basically this new class hierarchy is introducing some compatibility problems, for example. Uh, so, yes and no, 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 because this is this is a very important uh, pattern that uh, happens all the time. And even if you didn't have the class compact, the, you, you would have the problem even if you don't didn't factor things in a nice way. Just because you f the factoring makes things easier to understand and easier to reuse, but uh, the, the, the semantics is not depending on the factoring. The old, fa the old semantics was wrong, so no way how you factor things, uh, the two semantics are incompatible and you wouldn't have uh, the same. The, the old system, yeah, right. whether you factor it through these classes or not, uh, did have the implicit downward and, uh, and uh, sideway everywhere, and uh, whether you do it manually or whether you uh, whether you do it manually every time or whether you use this mixing to do it for you, you st it's still incompatible with uh, uh, doing it. It's still incompatible with not doing it. Yeah, okay. For for a, the um, when yes. you have these list of operations, yes. Um, 
are th is that are those implicitly ordered or are they yes and no uh, that is um, the, the current traversal algorithm follows the order and the order should not matter too much but uh, we, we do preserve it in, uh, in ASDF3. And so if for whatever reason your order between these operations matters, uh, it, the traversal will, will preserve the order, but if you, for, if you really want a dependency, you should explicitly declare the dependency, uh, otherwise your incremental build will be wrong. Right, so, so in other words, right, so if you, if you have a self-word operation of A and B, then for example, you might want to declare the B as depending on A. depends on A. Yes, otherwise as in, your incremental build will fail. And so yes, it's possible, Good. it is possible to have uh, the serial build work uh, in uh, the serial non-incremental build work uh, in a way that breaks the incremental or the parallel build. And that, that's, what, what, that's, what, that's what used to happen with ASDF 1 and 2. The serial uh, build from scratch worked and when you built uh, incrementally or in parallel it just failed because there were these missing dependencies and the missing dependencies was a prepare up and I had to add prepare up and for that I had to add upward uh, uh, operation and for that I had to to break to break the old assumptions and make things incompatible So input files, what input files and output files does is pretty straightforward. There is a magic input files method for self word operation that is inherited from a clever hack in ASDF1. Um, you can look at what it does. Basically, uh, my input files are the output files of, my, of the things I depend on, basically, which is clever. And, um, and works most of the time. And then there are other... Uh, operation mark dot com operation time yes this is to, this is a this is a thing that remembers when the thing was done when the operation was done mark operation done component operation time and uh, that that's an important part of the algorithm I, I, I if you want to do things incrementally you have to remember when the thing was done and whether it needs to be done again and that's uh, what these uh, methods here do, uh, component operation time and mark operation done. And basically every component, every component has a hash table of the operations, uh, mapping the operations to the times. And uh, if I remember that's what works. And then perform is a thing that actually does the operation. And after I'm done the op with the operation I mark it done and before I do it I'm I make sure that all the directories exist. So I, I love this like class like method combination. It's just like hmm. Uh, and uh, right now I, I'm 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 looking at the build system at Google that's written in Java, and Java does not have uh, these very nice like double multiple dispatch and method combinations. And this is so good to have that in, in common list. So good. I mean. Um, there was uh, the traverse algorithm of uh, of ASDF one was but ugly and horrible, and I'm glad we're rid of it and completely refactored. But this this basing these things with like uh, multiple dispatch and method combination is so nice. That, that's one of the that the thing that makes ASDF nice. You know, I would never have written ASDF the way it is because I am too stupid or whatever. Uh, and uh, Dan Barlow really hit the nail when he found when he, he found that and it was enabled by, by class and inspired by remarks by Ken Pittman but it's Dan Barlow who actually did it and it, it works. Perform with restarts as I, there was like, a, there used to be in, in the old uh, ASDF one at some point uh, an, a magic around methods and then they defined a general um, generalized method combination for an ASDF around to, to put things around performs. This was not compatible with every implementation and then I, I moved this to a different uh, a different method called perform with restart and and indeed when you do the parallel build or anything you don't want perform with, with restart to happen in the same uh, process as perform you want perform to happen in your child process and 
perform will restart to happen in your master process. So there are really different methods. And so uh, perform or restart gives you restarts. Okay. So action that's it. now let, let's move to Lisp actions. Ooh, that's where we're. So, so yes. I, actually, before you you go on. Um, yes. So what is the? So I, I remember that in ASDF two, one of the biggest problems was um, across images you have no notion of the state of systems, and that was why. Yep. Um, there was no propagation uh, of chain of need to recompile across system boundaries. Yes, and that's the thing that that's been fixed in the SDF three. That is partly fixed. The the, the, the fix uh, and we, we'll I suppose we'll go there when we it's uh, when we go to the traverse algorithm. But the the, okay. the 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 big the big difference is that now we have a notion of file stamps and t t time stamp for each file. And that didn't exist in ASDF. That was a big bug in ASDF one and two, and with uh, always previous dev system or well, MKDF system and older dev system, like, it looked like like no one had had known that in the free software list community, and it looked like actually uh, uh, the proprietary dev systems had that, and we didn't, and that's a scandal. And uh, so each each proprietary dev system independently rediscovered the need for timestamps. Uh, across files and across actions, and it had to be reinvented once for for the free software dev system, and I, I did the reinvention. But um, okay, like, like Symbolix right. had it right, uh, Allegro has it right, Lispworks has it uh, not quite right, but uh, right in the common case, and um, I had to reinvent it for for ESDF. So uh, Lisp actions. So here are the actions specific to Lisp. And so we have a CL and, and components specific to Lisp. Well, a CL source file is just a source file that ends in Lisp, and CL source file dot CL it ends in dot CL, and uh, in dot LSP ends in dot LSP. So I think that should cover it for most people who use uh, Lisp. Uh, and then abstract class basic load up and basic compile up. And here are the real things: prepare up, load up, and compile up. That is the thing that everyone uses. And then prepare source up and load source up when you load things at source. Fewer people use that. I don't think many people use that if ever, but some people use it sometimes. It loads at source. It's, it can be useful. I use it. It's notably used by ASDF dependency gravel. So I recommend that please don't break that. And test up. So these are the classes that are used for list, list things. So let's, we can forget prepare source up and load source up, which are like, um, variants are the same, but uh, look. let's look for prepare up, load up, and, and compile up. So prepare up means... So wait, uh, yes. so, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, remind me... Yes? Wait, load source stop is the one where you... You load uh, is, files is at source. You load directly the list file, you don't you don't load the, the facile file. You don't compile and load the facile file, uh, you, um, you load directly the source file. And so prepare up, uh, prepare up is uh, the, the, the operation. Make sure I have loaded all the dependencies before I may load or compile a given file. So uh, prepare up uh, uh, goes upward and sideways. So upward it propagates itself, and sideways it propagates load up. The sideways operation is load up. So before I load something, I must prepare up my parents and I must load up my sideways dependencies. A load up, okay, it's a basic load up, it's a downward and sideway and self-worth operation. And so as downward and sideway, I don't specify, so by default it will be nil and nil uh, designates itself. So I downward depend on load up and sideway depend on load up. And self-worth, I depend on, on uh, prepare up. Actually, I could remove sideway operation here because the sideway is already taken, taken care of by uh, the sideway is already taken care of by prepare up. We don't need sideway. That's interesting. So here, simplification at work. So um, similarly, compile up 
we don't need see oh in compile up I had already removed the sideway because the sideway would be wrong actually so that's interesting I just removed the, the sideway for load up hmm. let, let's see let, 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 let's I, I will not commit that before I test it <laughs> I will test before I, uh, any, any change I made in the session will be tested before it's committed, if it's committed. Um, and compile up is basic, compile up, and it's downward and southward. And downward, that means that I'm propagating compile up downward. And uh, southward means uh, I'm propag I, I depend on prepare up first. No, actually downward, I, I depend on load up. Oh yes, before I can, before I can say that I have a, Compile the current. Huh, why is it load up and not compile up? I'm not sure. Should that it be compile up? I think it should be compile up down downward, which is the default. Let's uh, let's change that and uh, see if it breaks or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Um. To compile something, I just need to have compiled the thing be below me. I don't need to have actually loaded them yet. Or do I? Maybe if there's a file associated to me, I need to. But uh, usually, Mike? if I if I'm a if I'm a, a parent uh, a parent uh, component, I don't have a file associated to me, so shouldn't matter. Yes, sorry, you had a question. No, I was just going to say my guess is that it has to do with those, those that uh, the odd semantics of the operations on the systems themselves. Maybe. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe if um, a system has something magic associated to it, you need to to load the things before you may compile it. Uh, anyway, let 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 let's wonder, try that. I wonder if it has to do with what um, if you. Yeah, if there's if if somebody has written a perform operation on compile up on the system, yes, then you, I well, can't imagine anyone doing yes. that. But, but yes, but it could happen. Yes, and then uh, then I, I would say that this person has to define a, a, a component depends on on his or in in order to on his system, and uh, move the burden on him to do the right thing. So here I'm, I'm running the test with make t, uh, make test with uh, CCR as a lisp, and uh, we'll see if it if my modifications so far pass. But um, okay, so prepare up and what are then there are methods on them. So prepare up, there's no, it's just a propagation uh, node, so there's no like useful methods on it. Like no input file. See, and these are the, the minimum uh, uh, things I need to define. I need to define the component depends on, but that's implicitly defined here by my um, by my mixing the mixings I use. So I only need to define perform input files and output files. I think the default output files might be nil. So um, and the default there is no default input file. I don't know. That's weird. I don't see output file. Why is there no output files? Is there a default output file method? Uh, def method output. Yes, apparently there's a default method for output files, but there's no default method for input files. Yes, there is also a default method for input files. So I wouldn't need to define this, do, would I? Well, only for this, but you said only for the self word ones. Wait, was it only for self word? No, there's a, a default uh, operate uh, method for input files on an operational component which says nil. So, oh, oh, oh. so I should be able to delete this method here and it should work. Well, that's another thing we need to uh, to test. Hey, interrupt this test. Oh, script fail. See the previous script fail. So something somewhere I, I, I define, you know, oh, this should obviously work while well, it didn't. So, um, see, uh, I don't know what I, I, I'll fix the things before. I, I will, I'm not going to co commit anything, any of the things I, I, I modified un until I tested. But one of the, one of the modifications that I did so far broke it. So it's, 
it looks obvious. Oh, I can change this. Uh, no, it's not obvious. <laughs> the thing was here for a reason. So um, uh, ASDF is fragile and make sure to run tests before you make a modification because modifications that look, oh, so obvious are not obvious and, and break stuff. So good luck. Good luck modifying ASDF. And uh, the regression tests like, are like a uh, lifesaver. I could never have defined ASDF3 without this regression test suit and I had to uh, enhance and modify it a lot and uh, add a new lot of new tests uh, otherwise things break I mean ASDF is such a fra fragile beast you can't you can't just make an obvious modification and expect it to work as an aside at, yes. at some point it might be interesting to talk about the up limiting the upgradability tests yes because with the new Yes. Proliferation of different classes of Allegro. Yes. Then I find that now. So uh, to the upgradability tests can run sixteen hours. Per yes. Week. So what I recommend is that you just go into test slash uh, run test and define exceptions here. Uh, we can assume that the upgradability is the same for all Allegro implementations, for instance. And then you can run exceptions such as, uh, so this is run test. I think the test. important distinction for um, Allegro is between the case sensitive and case insensitive. And if you test both of those, sure. So, maybe SMP, not SMP, but I don't yes. so you I could, think. Yes, uh, so you could add exceptions here to uh, yeah. invalid upgrade test P and add patterns that eliminate test in those implementations you don't care about. Or those right. variants you don't care about, so I recommend. Some you of these. Yes. <laughs> so this, this, uh, I think we must be skipping. We must be skipping one X anyway, aren't we? Or are yeah. we still doing any of the one Xs? Uh, we're doing a few one Xs, I think. Uh, hmm. And uh, actually, I think uh, it, it, this one should be working now because I add, I, I, I added um, the punting for for one X. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to remove this thing. And once again, I'm not going to commit that. Oh, I can't. Well, um, we'll see. Uh, uh, I think it should work because I added punting in, in header.lisp. It used to be that punting did not happen on Allegro. Now it does happen on Allegro. And, but on Allegro, it only happens here for versions older than 2.0. And Allegro mm -hmm. still is, is working in SBCL. So it, it should work now for you. Mm -hmm. And once again, um, I'll run my tests, but uh, who knows? Uh, they may or may not uh, pass. And I revert things, I don't pass tests. Uh, back to Lisp action. So, compile up. What do, what do we do in compile up? Well, action description is a trivial informative uh, thing. And uh, Compile up on a file, uh, compile the file, compile up on a parent component means I have I am done compiling everything. So the, the text uh, description is slightly different. The, the, the description for, uh, well, it's a, it itself, it's not a reason. Compile up on the component. So the, the thing you must remember is that the, the, the graph, uh, when I run things, uh, the graph doesn't have nodes that contain other nodes. It has nodes that link to other nodes. Right. So, so when uh, uh, the node for compiling a module uh, links to the node for each co compiling each of its dependencies, the node that for the module arrives in the end at the end in the graph traversal it doesn't happen around, and it it cannot happen around because there can conceptually be links magic link magic component depends on methods that that exit the, that somehow do not respect the hierarchy so uh, it's really the the node for compiling the parent happens at the end after the node for compiling everything and maybe we can see that in uh, no not in the shell but in in what in the at the REPL. I can look for what the component depends on for compile up of uh, fire utils. 
Well, it happens after... Oh no, it's a traversal, sorry. Traverse, compile up and fire utils. Well, this... Uh, see, the compile up for fire utils happens in the end, after the compile up for everything, and it happens after... For instance, the compile up for fire utils base, which is a module, happens after the compile up and load up for everything inside. So it doesn't happen around, it happens after. That's uh, the important thing to remember. It, it's a graph, it's not, a, it's not like a boxes that contain each other. It's, it's, it's just a flat graph in, in a way. So, yes, so the, the action description is slightly different. And then we have a call with around compile hooks, which, is, uh, which allows you to have hooks around compilation which is important. Uh, it was introduced in ASDF 2.20 or something like that. And so to perform compilation, here's a different perform compilation. Uh, I multiple value bind, but I extract the output and then I call around compile with call with around compile hook and then inside I do the compile file store. And compile file store is just a, a Portable abstraction defined in UIOP that does uh, compile file, but what it does, it it I think among the many things it does, it first does not create the output file until it's complete, which allows the which means that if you are broken, if you have a bug mid compilation, you won't have a facil file that has a, half of the thing compiled which is a big bug that, that, that used to break a lot of our incremental compilation that, at ITA, where there's a bug inside the file, and then it, it starts the compilation. The compilation is uh, interrupted by an error at the middle. You type control C, control C, control backslash, you kill, you kill the list, you restart, and then it loads. Oh, the file already exists. I assume the compilation was successful, and I go on com loading the half-compiled file, and of course, half of my... Uh, only half of my definitions are there, and something breaks later in the build of my build is incomplete and have no way of figuring out what happened. So compile file does this atomic compilation. It does also the fact that on ECL you must uh, compile first a .o and then a .fast from the .o, and compile file like uh, deals with all the things, and it also deals with the fact that uh, depending, uh, yes, you want to have the correct output it, it does the right thing. It's a, an abstraction layer that does the right thing. At, at the end, you check the list compile results of compile file. Okay, what next? Uh, report file p. Yes, and then there is this report files because you want to have to defer warnings and store the, the information about re deferred warnings in the warnings file. And, and so when you are done compiling a system or a module, I don't remember which, you must check the wor warning files. When is this done? This is done for system. I don't remember. We don't check the warnings files for built-in system. Ugh. And uh, so, where is that done? Yes, for a system that's not a built-in system, we we check the deferred warnings. Here's the deferred warning support, which is disabled by default because it broke too many things in QuickLisp. Is anyone still listening the, the to me? Yes. The deferred warnings will continue to break everything on Allegro. Okay. The, the well. problem is that Allegro, Allegro uses with compilation unit to decide whether to issue a uh, undefined function warning. Yes. So, yeah, we, we had this problem. It. it well, you know, we it, have a continuous. We have a continuous integration scheme where we build things and we uh you know it's a failure if there's any warnings but yes. of course without with a compilation unit uh acl will just throw a huge number of undefined function warnings. yes so this warning check tries to uh to have a virtual with compilation unit around each system and uh, 
and it, it works, but it means that it finds actual bugs in your code and lots of code in Quick Clips actually has those bugs and needs to be fixed. And so, uh, yes, yeah, this, 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 this has a, a virtual uh, with, with compilation unit around each system. And I think that's what people want, or that's a thing that makes sense. And um, Right, I just couldn't figure out how to, the ver as far as I can tell, the Allegro needs a real with compilation unit, not a virtual one. I think this is, uh, I think this is, uh, I think this is working now in Allegro. Uh, there may be bugs, but I think this is. Uh, uh, is there Allegro in uh, Allegro? Yes, Allegro is supported in the deferred warning thing, so it should work. And if it's not working, I'll, I'll, that's I'll a bug. I'll check it. I'll, I'll check it again. Yes, it it should uh. work these days. Uh, and once again, um, yeah, since it's disabled by default, it's not super tested these days. So there may be bugs, but it should work. What 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 do I test? To, what do I turn on to test it? Uh, I think the function is called UIOP enable deferred warnings checks, and it returns the name of the uh, the the name of the file or something, whatever. The, yeah. Well, you, you can you can look at it. It's def it's all defined in. Um, well, list action and UIOP slash list build, and it's it's something it's something that would be great to enable the feature by default, but that requires lots of fixing, lots of fixing things in Quick List, etc. And when I send so, so bug report to in people, Quick List, yes, in Quick List it happens because there are lots of systems that have, for example, undefined function yes. calls. Yes, yes, that are never used. I mean. Uh, uh, you call in a function that's never used. You call another function that's not defined. So that's not an actual bug, but it's still a bug that's found by 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 that. It, it, it's it is a bug, but it doesn't prevent it. Like it's not a bug that prevents your system from running uh, after it's compiled. Uh, so right. it, it is a it yeah. So it it, it does find and sometimes it does find actual bugs. I mean, I, there are systems in which it finds actual bugs, but just in the corner case, that's not covered by by the test stop or whatever. So they never found the bug before, and it did find actual bugs. Uh, so it's a useful thing to have. But I think when I sent mail to everyone in Quick List, like only half of the people replied a year afterwards. So that gives you that maybe half of the system were actually not maintained anymore. But then you have to either uh, have a new maintainer to fix the bug, or and who wants to use a new maintainer or remove the system from Quick List, even though it's used. I mean, that's um, what happens when there's a minor bug in a system that's in Quick List and that's not maintained anymore, but that is used. Huh. Um, as a community service, let's go to like nobody can help me. So okay, if well. It's a useful Package I can take it on. I did it with a few. Okay, well, there are well, 25 so packages like that. I don't remember. Okay, it's not very big. I can do maintenance. Uh, and we, we use menu. I mean, it's a package that we use many system here at work. So. Okay. I think I, I have a list. I was going to say also that um, it would. I would. I would be inclined to be warned off of systems that have that in. Might might it might save it might save trouble to know that your system isn't maintained any longer. Yeah, so I have a list of twenty five odd systems that are unmaintained, and I can give them to anyone who who's interested. Send me email uh, about getting that list, and I'll, I'll send you the list. And I also have yes, yeah, so uh, I have that list and. I think that list was published in somewhere in ASDF Devil, and if you look, if you grab for the archives, when I, I sent email to everyone that that ASDF three broke when I had that enabled by default, and I there were like twenty five systems remaining in Quick List that were broken. Okay, so Lisp action. So what else is there that matters? So that was compile up. And load up is also related to trivial. Load up has a magic form for perform with restore so that it knows how to recompile a file. Um, you can recompile, yes. 
uh, when I try to load up, uh, when I try to, to perform the load up on the file, and I, re I realize that the file does not load properly, may, well, maybe I need to recompile it before it can uh, load properly. And uh, perform, perform, and, and the rest is trivial. So oh, that, the, that, the that, that restart is, is a, was a, I remember that, was a huge improvement. It used to be that if a <coughs> compilation, you know, some trivial typographical error could yes. cause you to have to restart in a very tiresome way. Yes, uh, this restart has always been there, I think. It, it, it's from ASDF1, it's just that at some point I had bro somehow broken it in ASDF2 or 3. But uh, this restart was uh, a very clever thing added in ASDF1. So, um, yes, I, I think at some point, I remember at some point breaking it, but uh, yeah, that's my bad. And that's, uh, I think that it's now, isn't it now tested? I believe it's now tested as part of our regression test suite. So it should not be broken. Um, yeah, but uh, oh well. The regression test suite is such a good thing to have. I mean, the, it kind of sucks. It, it, it's in quite in a sucky state. But it, that it works at all is great. And uh, ideally, if someone writes the ultimate uh, uh, test system for commonless, then uh, the ASDF test system should be moved to, to using it. And that, that should be possible uh, using like Lisp invocation to invoke subprocesses and whatever. But that's a different, uh, that's a different uh, problem. Uh, I'm not going to walk over the, the test system right now, except that the main entry point is in test slash run tests, and that then it it always loads a, a file called test slash lisp. Uh, what the test support maybe? No, support. I don't remember. What's the name of the the test support maybe? That lisp. Support. It's script support. Script support. That lisp. Yes. So script support and uh, run test are the main uh, things. And uh, if you have time, you can uh, tra transform run test to be a Lisp script, <laughs> but that would be more pain than uh, that would be more pain than necessary. <laughs> no, I think given the especially given the limitations on. Um, Lisp works. It might be really awful. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. That's true. Well, you you, you could use a uh, no, it wouldn't. Yeah, C no. launch works great, <laughs> that but would be really painful. C Although I, I guess it might help on Windows. Yes. Anyway, uh, it's not not my problem anymore. My problem is going back to ASDF.ASD and look at what what we want to to go through next. So Lisp action, operation action. Do you want to look at find system and find component or do you want to look directly at uh, oper plan and operate? So find system and find component is how ASDF finds your ASD file and stuff like that. And operate is, well, assume that we have found all the stuff, let's do the, let's I'm, do the I'm plan. I'm gonna time out in about 15 minutes. So oh. I, I guess I, I find, I, I, I think I understand those adequately, and Fine I guess system. I prefer plan. Plan, okay. Yes, plan is where the new algorithm is. And uh, let's go back to the traverse action method that we saw previously. It just barely doesn't fit in one screen full. That's bad. And that's the method, or the two methods that you really need to understand, and that's the main one. So what does traverse action does? It, it does the meat of the traverse algorithm. So what it does, it, well, block nearly because must, there are ways to exit early. So let's first check that the action is valid. And the action is valid it's because, for instance, uh, it's an action that depends on the fit your P or whatever, or, or that's been forced out, or for some reason, you don't want to, act to do this action. Okay, let's not do the actions that are not valid. Then, uh, plan record dependency. Then, if the action is valid, then I will record the fact that I I depend on that, and that's useful. That's very useful for for everything, I suppose. Uh, that's very useful also for the 
I think that's used more, more by PYU than by U uh, than by ASDF. Where is this defined? Plan uh, plan record dependency doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything in um, in uh, in uh, ASDF, but it, it is very important in PYU. In PYU, it, it allows you to have a parallel um, the, the same the same arc can appear in many uh, you want to remember all the arcs in PYU whereas in ASDF you only uh, need to remember an order so if you only need to remember the order it doesn't remember you only need to remember the, um, the, the the oldest or the newest person who depend on you you don't really need to remember everyone that depends on on you you yes yeah, so in a sequential dependency, it doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't matter who who depends on you, but in a in a parallel in a parallel graph, it, it that, that matters a lot. So and then there's this thing of needed in MHP, and needed in MHP is uh, is this notion that some some of your dependencies, uh, for instance, uh, when I load something, the loading needs to happen the current image or but actually if if the loading was only necessary because while compiling something in a previous image I needed to have done the loading then it's not needed the current image so some some actions are needed in the current image and that's an, and so there's a, this needed image p flag passed to traverse action that says um, Am I asking? Am I traversing this action for something that must be done now, or am I traversing this action for something that must have been done in the previous image? And it will be T if it's needed in the current image. So if it's not needed, is this? Um, so there's a, a lot of logic associated with needed in the current image or not, and that replaces the do first versus in order to. That's the the. The do first versus in order to corresponded to needed to have happened at all or needed to have happened in the current image. So if something is needed to have happened at all, all its dependencies are are just needed in uh, are not needed in the current image because they need to have happened in the image that did the compilation, which is a previous image. Whereas if something needs to be done in the current image, uh, the needed in image p becomes very important. And once again, this is essential in the in the um, this is essential in the Wadiamakalit. This is essential in the parallel build of PUAU, and this is also essential for time stamp propagation and other and other things. So we need to remember the the needed in image things. And then there is this plan action status that tells you has this has this thing already been done in the current plan? So, so now we're, everything is, uh, is it's uh, like everything is parameterized not just by the operation and component but, but also by the plan. I have a plan object which can be once again a sequential plan, a parallel plan, it can be various uh, in the bundle operations we use various fake plans to to gather the recursive dependency of of a of a of, of an object uh, of an action, so uh, the plan is the plan is actually used inside ASDF for bundle operations. And okay, and then so we, we get these things, and then there is this. How how nested is that? This is like ugh, nested a lot. Maybe I could use nest to uh, to nest that, but that's another problem. So I get uh, the the status, and then when the status is that it's already done, and action done status p action plan status p, and not needed in image. Oh, I don't remember what that means. That means that if the action has already been done at all, or if it will have been done in the plan by now, and it's not needed in the image, then 
I just need to return the action stamp because traverse action returns a stamp. Basically, I traverse the action and it returns at the end the time stamp at which the action has been done in the past or will be done in the future or something like that. And if it will be done in the future, it will just be T as uh, this will be done in the future. And if it's been done in the past, it will return the timestamp at which it has been done in the past, that it's still valid. And that's the, that the timestamp propagation thing. So if the thing has already been done, uh, then and it's still valid, then return the, the timestamp. And why is it special not in actually? So I don't remember the effective the ENIAP is effective needed in image P, which means it's something that's needed in image and that has actually been done in the image. I don't remember what the A. Uh, I don't remember everything, but basically this is a logic that that handles the the something has to be done in image or not. And so th that's the recursion. That's the recursion. The recursion is visit action. So for each of the actions that I depend on, I need to visit dependencies and then do add them to the plan, etc. And this is the meat of the thing. And then when I need to add to the plan, I don't remember all these things. And there's a while visiting action that 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 handles the circularities, visit action. And visit action is a recursive thing. So, so basically this like will recursively visit all your transitive actions and by passing the traverse the traverse action thing to visit dependencies, where visit dependencies is a method that visits the dependency of a current of just one action. And this thing this was this is probably the single most complex uh, method in uh, Traverse, but uh, and it probably requires some more um, documentation, commenting, etc. But that that's the thing that does the meat of 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 the Traverse or algorithm and uh, set f plan action status, and then there's a plan action status that says that remembers uh, the status of the action in the plan and that remembers uh, the timestamp at which it either already has been done or we suppose that it will be done, that which will be T if it's not done yet. Done P means that uh, it has already been done. So if there's a stamp, it, it must have been done already. If there's a stamp that is not nil and that is not T, it has been done already. Uh, done P, well, sometimes it has not done been yet, so we need to add it to the plan. And planned P uh, tells if it has been added to the plan. Uh, yes, because if it's, an, if it's not needed in the image and it has already been done, then we don't need to do it. But if it's needed in the current image, then we'll need to... Uh, to add it to the plan, so we can ha we can have a timestamp for um, we can have a timestamp for an action that we know has already been done, but we don't plan to do it yet because it's not needed in the current image, and that would correspond to a lot of compile compile up nodes where the node has already been done in the past, and we don't plan to do it, so we don't need to do it. And the index is the index in the plan, so we can we. We can count and we count the number of operations that we done. I don't remember why we count. I suppose it's for debugging or pretty output. But every every action that is added to the plan has an index that gives the order in which it will appear. And I think that just for cosmetic purposes, the index is not actually used for uh, anything but counting actions. But counting actions is very useful in the in the debugging output of say uh, of say PoAU, it's also used maybe to sort in the output of PoAU the the actions so that they are always sorted in in order in index order. So so this is the complex stuff. 
but uh, I suppose visit dependencies is the one that does a local um, visit dependencies is very, is very simple for each uh, map dependencies and for each dependency is, 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 if it's valid then I, accumul I accumulated the latest uh, stamp of, of all the stamper dependencies so so uh, the rest is, is relatively it becomes relatively simple map direct dependency is exactly what you think it would do uh, that's the, the, the heart of uh, going through all the things in component depends on and decoding uh, decoding all the component depends on on, on form so map dependencies decode component depends on reduce direct dependencies that are re reduction by the map reduce so it gives you tells you what to reduce direct dependencies does uh, It does gives you a list out of this. So it, I don't think it's used in currently in ASDF. So it's more for debugging purposes. And uh, so if you want, let's let's run it. Um, can I do a direct dependencies dependencies of uh, say load up and uh, and uh, for utils base. Will that work? Yes. So it gives me, um, it decodes the component depends on for me. And another very important thing in plan is compute action stamp. That's the thing that, that's the, uh, the other very important, um, the other very important method in, in the whole thing. Uh, so what it does is, given a plan and an operational component and a key uh, that says uh, just done because it, it tries to, to get uh, it tries to get uh, the timestamp for for the thing. The timestamp for first I need to look at uh, at the action stamp of each and every of my um, of my dependency. So for every of my dependency, I extract its timestamp. Then for each of my input files and output files, I look at their timestamps. And then I look at, if it's just done, I say, I look at, um, uh, if it's just done, that's the time I'm going to use. Or if it's uh, depending on, if it's not just done, it has been done in the past. So I look, if I look at the op operation done in the past, and then there is this thing. So depth stamp looks at uh, the timestamp of all my dependencies out. It looks at the timestamp of all my outputs. In looks at the um, timestamp of all my inputs. If there's any input missing, uh, then I want to know it. If there's any output missing, I want to know it. And then the timestamp will be, uh, it will do something. So all present is there is no missing input nor, nor missing output. Uh, earliest out is the earliest of my outputs, and latest in is the uh, latest of my inputs, including the outputs of my dependencies. And I'm up to date, of course, if my latest input is uh, earlier than my uh, earliest output, then I'm up, all up to date. And if I'm all up to date, then... Uh, if I'm all up to date, then I can return the latest of my outputs as my timestamps. If I'm not up to date, then uh, so there are several cases. So what is it? So if there's any input or output missing, I and I thought I would be done. I, there's a, a warning, but otherwise, uh, if I'm just done, then I just need to. Uh, so either I'm just done, then uh, ASF is tell me, telling me, hey, this is just done, just compute the, the, the timestamp. If it's not just done, I'm trying to find the timestamp for a previous, for a previous um, uh, run of the action, and then uh, I'm looking whether it's uh, up to date, and if it's up to date, I will return uh, some values. 
and if it's not up to date I will tell hey it has to be done in the future and the nil I don't remember what the second value is uh, so this is a timestamp and the nil says that it has uh, not been done it has not been done and this is a timestamp that you're going to use the t is a timestamp so t means in the future and nil means not been done and rather if it's already has been done then uh, use the done timestamp as a, as as the time it has been done and just on out up uh, I don't remember what this is so what was in the uh, in the distance gets what the second value I don't remember the second value here that's a case where I didn't I don't remember uh, the thing. The first value is definitely the timestamp at which the thing has been done or will be done. So if it has never been done at all, it will be an, uh, no. Nil means uh, it has been done at minus infinity, so it has already been done always. T means it will be done in the future, so it has to be done. And uh, an integer or means it has been done at that uh, date. So uh, it's a timestamp to propagate. And the second value, I'm not sure what it means here. So, second value might mean something relative to the needs to be done, and uh, and up time equal down time. I think the second flag is: does it need to be done, or has it already been done? No, yes, 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 yes. The first one is a timestamp when it was done or will be done. And second is, has it been done satisfactorily? And if not, uh, then you need to redo it. So this is the uh, most important, uh, another second thing. So maybe it needs a returns to value. Returns to values. The timestamp. Uh, of the action if it has already been done been done and is up to date up to date or t if it uh, if it uh, either hasn't been done or is out of date and a boolean that is t if the action has already been done in that plan or something or nil if uh, if it needs to be done I think that's what uh, that's what this is. Okay, so after that, everything is boilerplate and everything is straightforward after this, these two methods. Uh, any questions there? Is anyone following? Is there anyone left? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're 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 following. Okay. Um, so Although it's kind of hard to follow. Yeah, it, I'm sorry, it's hard to follow. Uh, you'll you you may have to, uh, to 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 look at this. I mean, sometimes I'm just telling you where where are the th important things to understand, and unhappily we may not have all the time we'd like to um, to investigate in detail. Um, uh, compute action stem basically is a very important method that takes a plan, an operation, a component, and a flag just done, and tries to figure out the timestamp for that action, the timestamp for that action within that plan. And within that plan, when the plan is nil, it's a magic thing that means um, what has actually been done in, the, in reality. So what has been done before, not in the plan, but in reality. And when the plan is a is a plan object, it's relative to the current plan. And that matters when recursing for dependencies, and I'm looking for at what 
uh, that was the temporal propagation work. And then it, it could be that uh, looking just at my in files and my out files, the latest in files is earlier than my earliest out file. And then the old, uh, the old ASDF uh, operation done P method would say, hey, it's up to date because the latest out in file is older than the earliest out file, then I suppose that the out file should be done before the in file is all up to date. Wrong, because sometimes it could be that my, uh, my out files are more recent than my in files, but I also depend not just on my in files, but on all the macros defined in, in previous dependencies, and then I must propagate uh, the time stamp from the dependencies and also compare to that. And that's all important here. Uh, latest stamp. Where is the latest stamp? Depth stamp. Where the depth stamp ha appears here. Stamps latest. I want the latest of all my dependencies and my in stamps, not just of my in stamps. So that's my latest in. And that's a big thing that was missing in ES, or one of the big things that was missing in ESCF one and two. There was. There was no propagation of the timestamps of your dependencies, only from your current file in stamps. And this, this method looks complex. It is complex, but it's doing the right thing. And the right thing was quite a pain to, to figure out. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, I, I am going to have to go in just okay. a couple of minutes. Could you um, go over the forcing logic? I think that was one of the complicated things about the original uh, yes. implementation and it looks like you've cleaned it up substantially. Yes, so the thing is I think I moved the forcing logic into action valid P if I remember correctly. So uh, force action forced P. So there is this action forced P that is now defined, that is now associated to the plan. Now the plan has this force and force not thing that kind of work correctly. I think that you had, uh, there's a bug open as to whether uh, force should take precedence over force not or the other way around. And it, I think right now it's force not that takes precedence over force when you want it the other way around. I don't remember. Uh, no, it's, it's the other way around. Force takes precedence, precedence over force not. So I think if you say force all, then you can't say all except. Okay. Well, so it's, but, but it's low, it's it's a low priority thing because we don't. I don't think we actually have a large number of people okay. making complex use of force. Yes, uh, I'm against the use of force. Uh, wait, um, except in except when necessary. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, there's this force. It's now part of the plan and not part of the operation, and it's uh, initialized in operate or something. And it modifies action valid P. So action valid P was this thing that looks at the features and the force flags, etc. And looks, uh, do I need this? Uh, do I need this uh, action? And now it's it, it it's all handled here. So that 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 that's really cool. Call while visiting action. This is a thing that uh, detects circular circular uh, dependencies. And uh, circular dependency detection, while well, visiting action, etc. And um, yeah, so that that's the basic, the heart of ASDF. And all the rest just uses this method. This is just like trivial things that uses this method: perform, operate, plan, operate. On. This is all trivial. The filter sequential question plan is used by it's used by the bundles to accumulate. Say, hey, I want to find all the the fossils that that are in this system so that I can concatenate them. So to find all the fossils, I, I, recursively, I recursively call traverse just for the purpose of finding my input files and all my component depends on or whatever. And, and that's how it works. So, um, uh, so, so while computing, while computing a plan, I can call make plan as part of my bundle operations. And I call with a magic filter sequential plan that will find the order in which I must link my 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 fossils or my o, .o files or whatever to create my single bundled uh, output. So that's 
So that, that was one of the great things about the plan, introducing the plan allowed to do this bundle things treasurely in a way that was not possible before where there were like such hacks and uh, uh, buggy behavior and it just didn't work and after that it just works magically. You can look at the source. We don't have the time to do bundle, at least not with you, um, uh, uh, Robert, but uh, it, it all becomes, it all, after this like horrible uh, two gigantic like one over one page method, everything else is like beautiful and small and simple. And uh, this, so if you want to understand the meat of, uh, of, uh, of ASDF, you must understand traverse action and, um, and compute uh, action stamp. And all the rest is like very, very simple. All the rest like just falls into place. Right, and if you want to appreciate yes. the new ASDF, you have to have looked at the old traverse. <laughs> The old, uh, the old one where things were even bigger and didn't make sense and were actually buggy. And uh, yes, uh, now it all fits in one page. I mean, if you have a bit more than 25, uh, like ho how long is this method, including the comments? This method, 200, line 200 to line 254. So including comments, it's 54 lines and lots of comments. And yes, it's long. I, I run, uh, yeah, it's two pages long I, you need to go through it but it's not it's not that hard and uh, it makes sense and um, yeah that's a, that's a compute action stamp is the one you have to understand as well as um, as uh, the other one was traverse action there are the two there are the two there are the two functions that are really um, important that, that are the, the meat of the algorithm and the rest is like trivial boilerplate and trivial like intermediate methods and it all makes sense all the rest makes trivial sense i mean all the rest is trivial to understand right i think a lot of the the obscuring thing is mostly the um other than that is the upgrading logic which just adds boilerplate yes so the upgrading does actually make it, it more complicated Yes, so the upgradability logic, mostly you only see that the with upgradability forms and the, and the defined package forms. And there is also a when upgrade. Is there any when upgrade? Let's, let's go in the shell and grab for... Um, where's my shell? Shell. Okay, I'm, I'm okay. sorry, I, I have to be somewhere at four for uh, a, a meeting, so I'm, I'm going, I am going to have to go. Okay. But thank, thank you very much, and I will, I will wait, maybe you, if you want to commit any changes from this session, Yes. then um, let me know when you've done, and I'll merge the changes with mine, because I have some more okay. comments that I wrote down in passing, and we can... Okay. And I'll, I'll put the I'll merge your changes and then okay. put mine in as well. And I'll okay? make sure I'll make sure to test any changes uh, before I commit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ciao. Right, thanks thank a lot, Robert. Much. And uh, sorry for me for being slower than uh, I should have been. And thanks for staying with me. Ciao. Bye. Uh, does anyone else want to stay, or or are you all done and? Uh, I can stay half an hour more if someone wants it, or we can call it a day. Yes? No? Well, I, I missed the beginning, so <laughs> I'm a bit lost anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it was starting at 4, and in fact it was ending at 4. That's me. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for, for joining us, Mark. I, I hope it... I hope it helped and you learned something, but... Um, well, we, we look, you, you made uh, some recording of... Uh, uh, hopefully, yes. <laughs> hopefully yeah, it's yeah, recorded. Yeah, that, that, that was a, a great idea, I mean... Uh, yes. Yeah, that, that, that was very good. I think we should do that for our subject. Maybe, it, yeah, maybe it, sometimes... Uh, it, it was not as structural. Or whatever, or, or even... Yes. Stupid, stupid things, but it's, uh, I think it's good. Okay. I couldn't go over as many things as I wanted, as fast as I wanted, but I think the, the general ideas went through and it, it's good to have like interactive questions because that, that's the thing that people actually care about and actually don't understand. Um, yes, this is, a, this is a very nice format. 
Okay. Uh, thank you for doing it, by the way. This is kind of it's just a one of a kind opportunity, really. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, is anyone st if anyone wants to stay, tell me now. Otherwise, I'm I'm going to call it a day. And uh, and thank you all for coming and joining. Okay. Thanks. Well, thank you, thank you very much, all, and I'll I'll pause the recording uh, soonish. And thank. Um, oh, Anton maybe, has. Maybe, maybe can you say, Anton can says you he can say and have two questions. Anton, yes. Hello, Anton. Anton, you're still there. I cannot hear you, Anton. If you're if you're speaking, your microphone is on mute or something. I cannot hear you, Anton. Hello. No, I cannot hear you. Yes. <coughs> Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey, Anton, is it you? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now, Anton. Uh, the first question is uh, simple. Yes. Uh, can you repeat why uh, operations are singleton? Why uh, find a or make operation? Uh, okay, 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 okay. Like operation load always. Yes. So if you go back to, I suppose, is, is it an action? Uh, component operation time. Here is the thing that to, to remember if an operation has already been done. So there is this. Uh, uh, so in computer action timestamp, it. Uh, okay, let's go back to compute action timestamp. So this is a very. This is the heart of the. Of the dependency thing, compute action timestamp. What the timestamp has associated to an action. So it calls plan action status. And plan action status, where is it defined? Um, uh, it's defined here. Plan action status. Uh, it looks if if the plan has already been. Uh, it looks in the plan if the action has already been visited, but it also looks if the. It may also look, uh, why would it look uh, if a thing has been done in reality? A plan action status here, or plan action status nil OC. So before it, uh, uh, it, it also looks if the action has already been done in reality. If the action has already been done in reality, then I don't need to plan for it anymore. I can just return the timestamp of that. So plan action status nil is, how is that implemented? Uh, here, this is implemented by uh, plan action status. Where is it? Plan action status. Here, right here. It's looked at the component component operation time. So I have for every component here. I'm storing. Uh, um, okay. Making sense. I create it creates an object set to subject, but what is important is I extract the stamp p and the done p from component operation time, which is defined here. And component operation time, I think it's a uh, it's a hash table. Uh, where is component operation time? Here, here. It's a hash table mapping the type of the operation to uh, to the time to uh, to the data to the to the stamp. So, and, and here in a hash table, it has to be a hash table, it's, it's a set, so it has to be a hash table. And what is a hash table going to be um, indexed by? It has to be inde indexed by something, and, and happily that something has to be the, the, the class of the operation, the type of here, the name, the name of the class. So we could try to remember the operation, for instance, with all its flags. Problem is with all its flags, uh, currently remembers trivial things like forced or crap like that, and which means that when I force it, it would be not the same operation and as when I didn't force it, and which means that um, I would have to to remember ten different. I, I could not unify. I need to somehow unify the. I need to somehow unify the, the operations that are the same. If if I had an operation object somehow there, uh, hi love, uh, that's my daughter who came back from a trip. Um, oh, let let me take away my arm. Oh my kid, you just done me bra. Yeah.
about that. So um, the problem is should I or should I not distinguish two operations that have the same of the same class? Well if I should distinguish them then this cache is useless because every every course to operate creates a, a new operation object. So I, I will never ever reuse a previous operation so everything will already always be forced. And uh, Yes. So th there's. <coughs> okay, elle a faim. Tu as faim, monsieur. Oh, oh, c'est quoi ça? C'est quoi ça? C'est du chocolat. Oh, ouh, qu'est-ce qu'il y a de chocolat ici? Qu'est-ce qu'il y a de chocolat? Tu dis merci à papa? Tu dis merci, papa? Tu dis bonjour. Dis bonjour, c'est Marc et, et Félix et d'autres amis. Dis bonjour. <laughs> ok. Oh, oh, tu vois, ils te disent bonjour. Ok. Ok. Ok, so, sorry, I, I'm back. My, my daughter is not crying anymore. I'm back to, uh, to component operation time. Yes. So, when are two operations the same or not the same? There is no protocol for specifying that. And so, uh, currently, I, de I just decree that all operations of the same type are the same, which is how it has always worked in. Um, This, this is how it has always worked in, in ASDF. Maybe it was not a get hash at some point, it was just a, an A list, I don't remember, but uh, same, same, same thing. There, there, there's no good way to distinguish them and there's no good protocol to say when they are equal or not equal. So it, it's fixable in the, in the future, it's fixable. If you define such a protocol, you can index by, uh, by you can have an equal hash table that is, uh, defined by the, 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 the list of the operation class and it's uh, and the init org in the correct order with the correct canonicalization and that's conceivable but it doesn't exist and there's no protocol for doing that so so no I didn't understand your, 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 there was too much noise and, and your, your, your microphone is not that, that good. Felix, did you understand the question, Felix? I, I will type it. Okay, please I type did, it. I, I, I did understand the question, but it is, uh, the, I think the, the problem with, with your explanation was that uh, most of what you said was it's the meat of ASDF and you didn't really remember what it does and it's, it is, it is a really, There are complex interdependencies between those functions and you call them in different ways and stuff like this and it is really hard to explain. Okay. That, that could be the problem here. Okay, 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 okay. Am I right? So, tra yes. Traverse action calls compute action stamp at some point. So, let's go back to... Uh, let's go back to action dot... Uh, no, to plan, plan dot list. So, uh, I think compute action stamp is... Uh, it's, long, it's a long function but it's not conceptually hard to understand. What the compute action stamp does is, given the, the inputs and dependencies of an operation, uh, or, uh, of an action, uh, try to figure out if it has been done or not, and if it has been done at, at what time in the past it has been done. So the, the uh, I should, I should, given an action, figure out at what time in the past it has been done. Past it has been done. 
or if it if it has just been it has just if it has just been done return return the time that it has okay and uh, the other thing is what uh, now we want to look for compute uh, no no for traverse uh, def method traverse action okay this thing so at what at some point this thing calls plan action status and it's the plan action status that calls that calls a compute action step the plan action status tries to find the the status of the action in the current plan and in the current plan means that it can already have been done uh, and be up to date uh, in the in the, in the world, like n not just in the current plan, but at all. But it can also mean that, uh, yes, it had not been done, uh, this thing has never been done, but it will be done at some point, and then the timestamp associated with it will be t, that is, in the future. So it will return t, t, something like, it has been done in the plan, but that is in the future. Or it can return, it has not been done in the plan. Oh, oh, wait a second. There's something. This is. A, I have a fundamental question about this. Uh, does the so the the uh, the plan uh, also depends on the state of the world? So to say, so you just compute the plan and then that is checked against reality. But you check the reality while you're computing the plan. Is that right? Yes. The plan okay, for for incremental compilation. Point? Yes, for incremental compilation, you must um, must compare to reality because. We want to do only what is really needed. What is really needed, um, considering yes, reality. Course, I mean, isn't that conceptually wrong? To like, wouldn't it be like better if you would plan first and then check or filter the plan somehow according to reality? I mean, would that make the, the the thing a lot simpler? Simply because, like, I mean, computing the plan, given the dependencies and stuff like this, should be more or less like I can fit that into my head. But if you if you say you are like your planning depends on. And the, the work, yeah, um, yeah, I suppose it could be done as a two different passes, where in one pass you always accumulate everything, in the second pass you, you check the timestamp. It could have been done in two different passes. Um, the thing is that for backward compatibility, uh, uh, for backward compatibility, the, the plan, in the end, the plan only returns things that are actually done. Yes. And, um, that's a good that that that's a good question. So, it I suppose it could have been done in two 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 separate passes. I am doing both in one pass, but I suppose it could be done in in separate passes. Yeah, just just for being deterministic. I mean, I, it's it's fine. I am just mm. I was just wondering because I, that that was something that I absolutely couldn't anticipate that you would implement this like that because I mean, computing a plan is like mostly a functional thing. You know, I mean, you, yes. You, Traverse everything and so on, and then like act afterwards. I mean, this is how almost every other build system does it. I mean, I've implemented a few, and they yes. always did like that. So basically, what they do is they you, you check what, what, whether your plan is right after you made the plan, basically. Yes. And not you. Yes. You made yes, the plan, yes, yes. and then the plan is. I mean, so your plan is more like the list of things to do, and not really the list of all the things that need to be done. Okay. Yes, yes, I, 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 precisely, I think more precisely the plan is the list of all things need to be done, but they are annotated uh, yes. with information yeah, okay, yeah, whether yeah. We, we're completed already. Yeah, right? okay. Yes, I, I, I uh, think, yes. I think that that's already the case, that the, the plans, we, we, list the, the, we are listing the, everything that needs... Uh, Internally, there's a list of everything that needs to be done, but we only uh, add. Uh, we, we, we are going to traverse everything that uh, every conceptual thing. We are going to traverse it, but somehow we are only adding the thing. Yeah, I, I suppose it it may have been a backward compatible thing that I merged those two passes in one, and it it, it could it could probably simplify. Yes, there is probably a way to simplify this traverse action thing by by splitting. Uh, things into I I don't know it, it's very possible. Um, yeah, uh, but okay. So th thank you for that. That was that was good. So um, yes. So thank you, Andrew, for the comment. Yes, uh, that, that's a, that's a very good question, and I haven't thought about it too yeah. much. But yes, and especially since 
Um, in, in the original implementation where there was no separation between traverse and make plan, um, I, I need. Was yeah, it, it was even worse. So I needed to do it this way. Now that make plan has been separated from traverse, it's very possible that it's uh, it, this can be uh, uh, simplified. Yes, so that's a good. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? No, I think okay. my understanding of ICF is improved. Of course, okay. I can say I completely okay. know it, but uh, I think at yes. that point, so if, I, I suppose are learning must be by the code. Yes, I, I suppose that if you want to learn more about ASDF, the, the ideal thing to do is just read the source code in the order where things are defined. So you look at ASDF.ASD and um, and you look at each of these files in order. I, I, the, the, the thing is so much more readable now than it was when it was uh, uh, just ASDF. Um, that, that list. Okay. It's, it's Maybe one short question. Do you know the, what's the state of Quicklist quick integration with the ASDF3? So Quicklist uh, right now works with ASDF2. And I suppose it kind of works with ASDF3. Uh, but the, there may or may not be some issues. So uh, he, uh, the, the default quicklist, uh, the default version of ASDF. What happened here? The default ver uh, version of ASDF distributed with quicklist is still uh, ASDF 2.26, which is the last uh, in the ASDF 2 series. And uh, but obviously quicklist works with ASDF 3 since uh, most implementations provide ASDF 3, and so uh, quicklist does not um, downgrade to ASDF 2.6. So in practice, it, it works with ESDF3. It's just that some of the tools that uh, uh, Zach uh, developed around QuickLisp uh, don't quite yeah, work yeah. with ESDF. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, so because just in, in my quick testing, because you in the beginning you told like yes. us to pull down the source code and just yes. run it, and I tried and it felt in, a, in some way. Okay. And I was due to some quicklist integration issue. I don't know. I, I'm just, okay. I, I just wanted to, also we have a meetup coming up on uh, Tuesday and I wanted to say something about that there. Okay, so thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So yes, there are, there are some issues that need to be resolved and um, uh, I think mostly it works, but yes, there are some issues. So uh, yeah, it needs to be fixed. Okay, yeah. Nice, so thank you. I also, okay. I'm also going to drop out. Okay, and, um, bye Felix, bye everyone. And thanks. For, thank you all for joining. Ciao. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>